Thanks for the introduction. And uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Kofi, a second year PhD student at the Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications. Uh, today, I will introduce HostPin, a simple but effective system to diagnose intra host network bottlenecks. First, I will introduce the concept of intra host network bottlenecks. This is the basic topology of host network. Uh, this host has two CPU socket and two memory nodes. Uh, each socket has one RDB NIC and two GPU. And this is a normal process uh, when RNIC writes to the CPU memory. Uh, there is no intra host bottleneck, and the RNIC would reach the line rate. And when, oh, sorry. when, when an intra host link, such as RNIC's PCI link, suffers from degraded bandwidth, the throughput from the RNIC to the, uh, to the memory will degrade. Then the RNIC's receive buffer will accumulate. Uh, in a lossless environment, uh, if the receive buffer continues accumulating and exceeds the actual word mark, the RNIC will send the pulse frames to the TR switch to stop, stop its traffic. We call this kind of pulse frames TX pulse frames. Uh, well, in a lossy environment, uh, if the receive buffer is full, the RNIC will drop packets. For the impact of intra host network bottlenecks, first, intra host bottlenecks will lead to throughput degradation, uh, as RDMA is vulnerable to pack drops the degradation is more severe in a lossy environment. Second, in a lossless environment, it may lead to a PFC storm and PFC deadlock, which may bring down the whole network. Besides, in cluster, one single intra-host bottleneck may degrade the whole system. We, conduct, uh, we conducted a NICO test with eight servers. Uh, as the figure shows, uh, when there are no bottlenecks, all RNICs could reach near line rate. However, an RNIC with a degraded PCI link slows down the whole system. Therefore, intra-host bottlenecks could be discovered, should be, uh, should be discovered, uh, diagnosed, and resolved as soon as possible whenever it appears. However, intra-host bottlenecks received little attention before because previous RNIC had a low line rate and the PCI link could provide much more redundant bandwidth. Thus, the RNIC could still reach the line rate even when some links degrade. However, as the RNIC line rate increases rapidly, the PCI link bandwidth does not increase equally. Thus, when intra-host link degrades, it's more likely to result in bottlenecks. Besides, link failures become more frequent as intra-host topology becomes more complex. In addition, as host configuration items increase, misconfigurations become more frequent. Some of them may lead to performance bottlenecks. For bottleneck diagnosis, we have two primary targets. First, we need to quickly find intra-host bottlenecks whenever they appear, so we can deal with them to avoid application performance degradation. Second, when finding a host that suffers from intra-host bottlenecks, we need to diagnose the root cause quickly. However, existing mechanisms all have limitations. First, due to the lack of an efficient monitoring system, intra-host bottlenecks can hardly be noticed in time. Besides, existing benchmark tests, such as perf a perf test or NIC test, show the whole system's performance, including both the host and the network. When application performance degrades, they cannot quickly diagnose whether the host or the network should be blamed. In addition, even when finding the bottleneck lies in the host, existing mechanisms are hard to diagnose their root causes because of the complicated host topologies. Therefore, we need, to, uh, we need a bottleneck monitoring and diagnosis system dedicated to intra-host network. Then it could quickly find intra-host bottlenecks. Besides, it should cover all intra-host links to find and diagnose intra-host bottlenecks quickly. Before introducing the design of host pin, we present our findings for intra-host network bottlenecks. Based on our experience, the symptoms of intra-host network bottlenecks could be broadly divided into intra-host bandwidth degradation and intra-host latency increase. Uh, first, the intra-host bandwidth will degrade when some links in the host network are filled. Based on our experience, all intra-host links shown in the figure may degrade. Besides, other traffic in the host may consume PCIe or memory bandwidth, leading to degraded intra-host bandwidth for receiving traffic. The second symptom is intra-host latency increase. Uh, this figure shows a normal process of GDR that means GPU direct RDMA between RNIC2 and GPU4. You can see that the RNIC2 can directly communicate with GPU4 under a PCI switch. 
However, misconfigurations such as disabling ATS and enabling uh, ACS may redirect all GDR traffic to the CPU report, leading to increased PCIe latency. And the increased intra-host latency may also degrade intra-host bandwidth. We evaluated the impact of PCIe latency on the bandwidth of GDR rate. We test the GDR rate bandwidth of distance one to four and use Manox new host to measure the PCIe latency. As shown in the figure, from distance one to four, the PCIe latency increases from one microsecond to 2.4 microsecond, and the bandwidth degrades from near line rate to around half the line rate. Uh, the reason is that ARNIC limits the maximum outstanding PCIe read requests. When intra-host latency increases, the limited in-flight bytes cannot saturate the intra-host links, and thus, intra-host bandwidth degrades. Uh, based on these findings, we conclude that intra-host latency and bandwidth could effectively reflect intra-host bottlenecks. Uh, if a pass has abnormal latency or bandwidth, we could infer that there may be some bottlenecks in the host network. And this guides the core idea of host pin, measure intra-host bandwidth and latency with loopback tests. This figure shows the loopback process. The loopback traffic goes from the host memory to the RNX send buffer, then to the RNX receive buffer, and finally, and finally back to the host memory. The whole process happens only in the host network. Therefore, we could use loopback bandwidth and latency as intra-host bandwidth and latency. And in brief, hosting use, uh, uses large messages to measure intra-host bandwidth and uses small messages to measure intra-host latency. Hosting is an always-on service. Uh, when there is no task on the server, hosting periodically measures intra-host latency and bandwidth with loopback tests and uses these metrics to monitor intra-host pass status. Uh, if some passes are abnormal, hosting will further diagnose the root cause. When the host is busy with services, hosting runs loopback tests to diagnose intra-host bottlenecks when RNX show abnormal counters. Next, I will first introduce how hosting diagnose uh, the root cause of intra-host bottlenecks when the host is idle. Here, idle means no tasks on the server. Then I will introduce the same process when the host is busy with services. Uh, when the host is idle, hosting periodically conducts full mesh loopback tests between all RNX and all endpoints to get bandwidth and latency metrics. Uh, these endpoints include all memory nodes and all GPU. Uh, in a 100 server shown in the left figure, we could get bandwidth and latency metrics like this by conducting full mesh uh, loopback tests. Uh, then we can compare the measured bandwidth with the baseline to judge the, st uh, the path status. Note that the baseline value is collected on some normal servers for endpoints affinity to RNX. Here, affinity means all memory nodes uh, and the GPU enter the same root port with the RNIC. Uh, for these endpoints, the RNIC could reach the line, the line rate. Thus, for these passes, we could judge their status by comparing with the baseline. Uh, if the measured bandwidth is lower than baseline by a threshold, we mark this pass as abnormal. Otherwise, we mark this pass as normal. For other endpoints, the RNA could not reach the line rate due to high PCI latency. Thus, if some links on these passes degrade, but their bandwidth is still higher than the baseline, so the mirror pass bandwidth is still close to the baseline. Thus, for these passes, we only judge if they are normal, if they are abnormal based on the baseline. Otherwise, we mark them as uncertain, uh, as gray blocks shown in the figure. Uh, our idea for bottleneck diagnosis comes from binary network tomography. In a given network topology, if a pass is normal, we can infer that all links on this pass are normal. Otherwise, one or more links on this pass may be filled. With enough pass status, we can infer link status. This figure gives an example. First, as pass one is normal, we could infer that link one to link three are all normal. Then as pass two is abnormal, we could infer that link four is abnormal. According to this basic idea, we could infer intra-host abnormal links based on the path status metrics. Uh, we use the metrics in this slide as an example uh, to illustrate the diagnosis algorithm. First, we set the status of all intra-host links as uncertain. The green color in the left metrics uh, shows the path between the RNIC and the endpoint uh, is normal. And we can infer that all links on these paths are normal. So we traverse all these passes and mark all these links as normal. Uh, red blocks uh, in the left matrix show that the path between the RNIC and the endpoint is abnormal. This means that some links on this path are abnormal. 
uh, then we traverse all these passes and mark all uncertain links on uh, mark all uncertain links as abnormal. After uh, this process, we could conclude that the CPU report shown in the figure is abnormal. Next, we need to diagnose the root causes. When the host is idle, the root causes are usually link failures or misconfigurations. For some abnormal links, the root causes are usually hardware failures, such as CPU report failure, memory channel failure, and uh, UPI failure. For some other links, such as abnormal GPU PCI link, uh, the root cause may either be failed links or misconfigurations. Uh, in this case, we could use intra-host latency to diagnose the root cause. If the latency from the affinitive RNAC to this GPU is also abnormal, then the root cause may be misconfigurations. Otherwise, link failures should be blamed. Next, we will introduce how host pin diagnoses intra-host bottlenecks when the host is busy with services. When triggered by abnormal counters on RNX, host pin only conduct loopback tests between all RNX and their affinitive endpoints to reduce the overhead to intra-host service. When the host is busy, some RNX, especially the abnormal RNX, may have service traffic. Pass bandwidth measured by these RNX will degrade due to the contention of service traffic. Therefore, host pin cannot judge the status of these passes according to the baseline. However, this RNX could still indicate abnormal passes by intercomparison. Among the RNX affinity endpoint, if the mirror pass bandwidth to one endpoint is significantly lower than that to others, host pin infers this pass as abnormal. For other loaded RNX, we can repeat this process to get abnormal passes. Note that if this server has some idle RNX, this RNX could still judge pass status by comparing with baseline. In this way, we get the pass status matrix. Based on the status matrix, we could infer abnormal links. This process is the same as the process when the host is idle. However, as RNAs with traffic cannot judge whether a pass is normal, some links may be marked as abnormal by mistakes. In, some, in this case, uh, links marked abnormal by more RNAs are, mo are most likely abnormal. Uh, in this figure, the member zero's channel is the most suspectable. Uh, when triggered by abnormal metrics, abnormal links are usually fully loaded. Based on this idea, uh, we could monitor their utilization to diagnose the root cause. Uh, if the utilization is very high, we can infer that traffic uh, contention is the root cause. Otherwise, link failures or misconfigurations may be the root cause. We have, developed, uh, we have deployed Hostpin on over 300 uh, A100 servers. Uh, the server topology is shown in the red figure. Next, I will introduce some bottlenecks found by Hostpin during the deployment. First, RNIC PCI link failure. We can see that the bandwidth from RNIC 2 to all interest endpoints degrades. Next, memory channel failure. We can see that the bandwidth from all RNICs to memory zero degrades. UPI failure. In this case, all cross socket traffic, uh, all cross socket traffic suffers from degraded bandwidth. Next, CPU report failure. Both figures on the left shows uh, CPU report failure, except that the uppercase has slight bandwidth degradation, thus no anomaly is found for endpoints that are not affinitive to the RNIC zero. Uh, and this case shows the CPU, uh, shows the GPU PCI link failure, and the bandwidth from all RNICs to GPU two degrades. Uh, this slide shows that misconfigurations lead to uh, both intra-host latency and bandwidth degradation. Uh, when ATS is uh, disabled in a virtualized environment, or ACS is enabled in a non-virtualized environment, the PCI latency between an ARNIC and its affinitive GPU will increase, and this will further lead to intra-host bandwidth degradation. Uh, as both uh, the latency and bandwidth between the ARNIC and its affinitive GPU are abnormal, we can infer that the root cause lies in the misconfigurations. In this case, the UPI link is overloaded by some more functioning applications, and Hostpin could infer that the UPI link is abnormal and diagnose uh, the root cause as the overloaded UPI link. So we can see Hostpin could accurately find the abnormal link and diagnose the root cause for all these cases. In conclusion, we have de uh, deployed Hostpin on over 300 and 100 servers, and Hostpin could effectively find intra-host bottlenecks. For non bottlenecks Hostpin could quickly diagnose the root causes. Besides, Hostpin also revealed six bottlenecks we did not notice before. Okay, uh, that's all for my present today. Thank you very much, and uh, any question, please feel free to ask.